Hi guys, it's Jan from Melbourne Food Forest. I'm gonna show you some of the things we're up to in the garden this week. We have to start off today with these glorious mandarins. So this is what we've been spending time doing, harvesting all the mandarins, which has taken a little while. But fortunately, it is a glorious day, glorious spring day. There's still loads more on this tree, this one in particular. But this is our biggest harvest yet for these um, two mandarin trees. We've spent many years nursing them back into good health. And look at this. You can see they're healthy trees. They're happy, healthy trees. They reward you with ridiculous amounts of fruit. So stoked with this because we have been eating mandarins for the past three months already and giving them away, um, sharing them with our friends and family and yet still got loads more. And we really had to pick these, as I said, um, this variety does start to dry out on the tree if you leave them on for too long so you don't want to um, yeah let them just like start shriveling up before you pick them you got to pick them when they're um, plump like this so loads of vitamin C on the way for us and um, you can see our wonderful living mulch under our trees which keeps them very happy it is a big myth that you can't underplant fruit trees. Here is the evidence. <laughs> Do you think these trees have been um, hindered or hampered by having all these different plants grown underneath it? No. If you grow the right things, they're actually going to complement each other in a guild. And that's what we're aiming for, is for plants to support each other and grow in harmony. So in fact, um, these trees have become heaps healthier since we planted the right sorts of living mulches under it and um, feeding it with our um, worm castings and a good quality organic citrus fertilizer very spar sparingly once a year. Look at that, it's so beautiful. And they're a good size too this year. Pretty big. This variety is really juicy. Oh, a little snail. Just gonna um, squish that and return it back to the soil. Really, really juicy variety. Quite a few pips though. And it's not, it's not honey mercop. Pretty sure it's imperial. But there's nothing like the taste, the nutrition and the joy of just picking your own fruit. So that's our one of our early spring tasks that we're doing right now. Picking citrus. But they're beautiful trees. You can see that tree's picked off most of the fruit. You can still see some left. And that one's still got some green fruit, which we'll gradually um, pick as they ripen. And on other exciting news, our girls are laying again. And not just laying a little, but a lot. And I'll show you the boxes of eggs that have suddenly appeared out of nowhere from these girls. And oh, we're meant to have three. <laughs> I can only see two. So I suspect one of them is in the laying box. Should we go check it out? Let's see. Come this way. Hi girls, they always jump up on that little ledge to watch me if I'm working out there, which is super sweet. I know they just want food, but it feels like they love me and they love seeing what we're doing. And I usually do throw them lots of caterpillars and grubs and aphid infested leaves. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. Oh, this is our chicken. That doesn't look like a chicken. She's our carny, our aracana. She doesn't have a crown on her head like the others do when she's laying now. She's probably like, oh, why are you watching me? Leave me alone. You can see them in action in our um, chicken video, which I will link 
above. But that's so sweet. Let me see if there's anything here. Oh, sorry, it's a bit rude. Looking up your backside. Oh, if I had another hand, I'd give her a pat, but okay. Connie. Hi, Connie. And our Barney's come in. Oh, everyone's come in. Everyone's come in to see what's going on. Yeah? Oh, Barney, you're over there too. Yeah, they're all laying now. Oh, I better leave you to it. Okay, first up, let's talk about eggs. Look, our girls have gone from not laying for a couple of months over winter to now each of them starting back up again. And we're just using other egg cartons for this. Of course, you wouldn't find green eggs in your normal egg cartons, would you? And that's from our little Aracana girl. And the dark ones are from our Barnavelda and the light ones are from our Australor light pink. So you can see who's been laying the most. Say it's Barnavelda or Aracana. But yes, yeah, so exciting to have eggs back again. I think we had to buy our first carton of eggs a couple of months ago. First carton since we've had the girls really. Yeah, because last time they started laying in they first started laying in winter actually and didn't stop so we haven't had to buy eggs until now but now they're on the lay again and we find ourselves with you know two dozen eggs which is awesome awesome problem to have lots and lots of eggs and here is some of our summer stash of pumpkins leaving them out in the sun to cure you can see this one's gone a little soft there still hard on this side so this one needs to be eaten ASAP you need to keep a close eye on them and somewhere dry and sunny these are all nice and firm so mix of butternuts kuri um, this one's like a miniature Queensland blue and this one was some cross of some sort but it's pumpkin spaghetti squash and there's quite a few outside the shed as well which I'll show you this is a massive new guinea bean massive and then we've got another one of these and you can see here chilies ready for preserving these are ricotto chilies you can find out more about them in our chili tour but they're perennial chilies which is why I've got chilies year round from them including in winter in our temperate area and quite hot but I'm gonna pickle these and they're delicious chocos I will have a separate video on these because they are very special I'm going to talk about how to sprout them and how to grow them. But here's our basket of sprouting chocos and ones that we eat from. And there's loads more as well. <laughs> yeah, so check, check out that separate video if you're interested in growing these. Well worth growing. But yeah, this is kind of what our winter table looks like. Pretty cool. Our beautiful peach trees are blooming. I love peach blossoms. So pretty. This tree's got really small blossoms, but actually produces huge, deliciously flavored peaches. Hard to believe looking at those teensy tiny flowers, but really it does. And you can compare the size of those flowers to this peach tree. Massive, flowy flowers and quite tiny understation flowers but that's um you know produced a lot of blossoms this year so hopefully that translates into fruit and no we did not spray our peach trees this year we try and take a minimal approach with what we need to you know do to the garden and particularly with sprays even organic sprays because everything has a cost benefit um, so the organic sprays for peach leaf curl um, are generally like a copper spray and copper can build up in your soil, but in small quantities, it's not a um, big issue at all. So for us, we try and balance that risk by only spraying once every three to four years. So we haven't sprayed this year. Fingers crossed that leaf curl isn't that bad because a lot of people will spray and still find that they have lots of leaf curl because it's hard to spray at the right time and coat your tree evenly. Plus, if a rain, if you get rain um, not long after spraying, it actually washes it all away. So a good idea when spraying is to put newspaper out underneath so that any um, you know, excess spray falls onto the newspaper, which you can then just discard rather than having it go into your soil. But we didn't bother spraying this year and um, 
I mean, looking at the new shoots so far, it doesn't look to be too bad, but we will wait and see. Over time, um, peach leaf curl, which is a um, fungus that comes from rain, um, you know, can weaken the tree just because it forces the tree to drop all its leaves. The leaves eventually curl up and look gross and then they fall off. So basically the tree has to grow another set of leaves and that takes energy. So other than that, like it, it's not doing that much. So if you do feed your trees really well and look after them well, they can bounce back. So some people do do nothing um, for these for peach leaf curl and still get a great yield from their tree as long as the tree's healthy. So it's up to you to balance and weigh all of that up. There's lots of things to um, consider. It's the time of spraying, the cost, the effort um, against, does, is it even really gonna be super effective? Um, and another thing I've thought, well, if the fungus comes in the rain, what if you just covered your trees over winter since they're dormant anyway with like a plastic cover or something you know perhaps that might minimize it too so i have thought about doing that i've never done that but um you know i think that could potentially work too but yeah look how beautiful peach blossoms are i hope we get some good peaches this year last year um we had a really bad issue with um fruit fly first time ever in our garden that we've had such a infestation of fruit fly i can't say i've ever noticed any in the past but that destroyed about 80 to 90 percent of our peaches which was heartbreaking so this year i am meant to be putting up traps soon for fruit fly i'm going to take you on that journey of mine because i am learning as we go very much so um, put up traps just when the fruit starts to form to to lure the, the males and the female fruit fly i'm really really um hoping that that works um so that we can actually enjoy some peaches this year so as you get into spring pests really start to um, get out of control if you don't stay on top of it particularly aphids with the slightly warmer weather their populations can really explode so can you see that all in those leaves you know you could spray that down and you could squish them but I think the girls will enjoy them and help me clean up these pests. Hey girls, you excited? Look, aphids, your favourite. There you go. And so they will um, spend their time picking off all the aphids off the leaf and the ones that drop onto the ground, which is wonderful. There you go girls, you can go share that. And here's our integrated pest management in action. <gasps>